A staph infection is a bacterial infection called Staph aureus, and it's a specific bacteria that really is fairly ubiquitous in our surroundings. There is a variant of staph that is a lot of people carry on their skin that's not a problem and not a pathogen. It doesn't cause any disease, doesn't cause any boils or problems like that. It's just there on our skin all the time. But there is a form of staph that's methicillin resistant staph. That's just a fancy term for uh, a bacteria a staph that is resistant to the beta lactam antibiotics and cephalosporins, penicillins, that kind of stuff. There are antibiotics that will still kill it. Uh, specifically Bactrim and doxycycline are two of the primary drugs that most doctors will use to try to eradicate methicillin resistant staph. The problem is that it's very contagious. You can pass it from person to person by touch. You can get it uh, from equipment at a gym or uh, services that somebody who's infected, they may touch that surface and then you go by behind and touch that surface and then ultimately you end up with uh, the infection yourself. If you have any open wounds or cuts, you're a little more susceptible, but that's not even necessary to pass the infection. And you can pass it to other family members in your family, and you can pass it uh, to yourself from one spot on your body to another spot. It causes boils, um, or, or what the public would generally call boils, which are red, um, hot, uh, inflamed uh, bumps. Uh, that may be draining pus from them, uh, may have a sore on the top of it, and ultimately uh, the treatment is the antibiotic therapy and sometimes incision and drainage. So a doctor will need to go in and open that uh, wound up and uh, get the pus to drain. And you can culture the whatever's coming out of it to determine whether or not it's uh, MRSA or if it's another bacteria. And that helps guide the therapy. Whenever a patient first comes to uh, Access Medical Center, one of our urgent care centers, uh, with a boil that they're concerned, frequently uh, people report that uh, they think it's a spider bite. That's actually one of the most common presentations is they'll think that they got bit by a spider because that's kind of what it looks like. If they have a fever, then that may, re may entail a little more serious workup and possible look in the hospital the emergency room and ultimately a hospitalization if uh, the bacteria has gotten to their bloodstream and sometimes a fever implies that. But assuming that there is no fever, the next thing that the doc's going to do is determine whether or not it's something that he needs to open up uh, surgically uh, with an incision and drainage to uh, get the abscess to drain, which ultimately is one of the curative factors. And then of course antibiotic therapy. Uh, a doctor is probably going to place you on an antibiotic therapy and recommend warm compresses to help keep it draining uh, because it, you do want it to drain if you can get it to drain. And then they'll take a culture to send that off to a lab, see what bacteria grows in that culture, and then we can get susceptibility reports to make sure that the antibiotic that we put you on is the appropriate antibiotic.